Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode 7, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about classes and object-oriented programming. So up to this point, we've been working with basically what is known as procedural programming, where we don't really worry about objects at all, we just worry about functions and uh, variables, and we just get from point A to point B, and then we just call it good. But there's a much more popular version of programming out there known as object-oriented programming, which basically says that every object in real life or in a video game or uh, in a database of accounts, for example, can be modeled programmatically or programmatically um, in code as an object and can be manipulated and referenced as an object and keep itself completely self-contained. So basically, as you would expect, the idea of object-oriented programming is oriented around objects. But an object is just an instance of a template known as a class. Classes make up everything that is an object. Now, classes have what are known as attributes, which are basically just variables inside of an object, and they have what are known as methods, which is basically just a function inside of a class. So before I get too far, let's actually just make up a class right here. So outside of our uh, main function here, we're just going to type class. Now there are actually two keywords in C++ in order to, or that can be used rather, uh, to define a class. There's class and there is struct, which is for structure. Uh, and I'll talk about the difference here in just a second. But if we wanted to make a class in C++, we would type in class, and then we would type in the name of the class. So in this case, we're going to be working with cats. So I'm just going to type in cat. Now note that I capitalized the C. I didn't necessarily need to do that, but it's generally convention, uh, conventional rather, to capitalize the first letter of a class or, yeah, of class basically. So uh, I would open and close the curly brackets, and I actually have to put a semicolon at the end, unlike functions down here where I don't need to do that at all. But I do need to do that with classes, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately, I don't know. It's just a design choice of the language. Now when I'm inside of the class here, I can just make little variables as much as I want to. So let's say I want to have the age of a cat, and I want to have uh, the name of a cat. Name, name, there we go. Now these variables right here, these are known as instance variables, and as they are right now in the class, they are by default private. Now there are private and there are public variables and methods. And basically that just says, can I access age from outside of the body of the class? So if I were to come down here into main and I were to make an object of type class, can I directly reference age and can I directly modify age? And in this case, because we declared it as a class as opposed to a structure, the answer is no, I cannot. It is a private variable. And likewise, if I were to make a method or a function, so let's say um, int, you know, cats, cats, there we go. If I were to make a method in here that, say, returned three, I would also not be able to access this method at all. I wouldn't be able to call this function at all because it also is private. Now that's where the distinction between class and structure comes in, because if in, instead I, or if instead of class I use struct, everything in here is automatically public now. So I can access all of this from outside of the body of our class here. Usually you're going to want to keep it to class, and you can manually decide uh, what is public and what is private. Now you can do that with these little tags just private and then a colon and then you don't have to do this but it's, it helps readability um, it's recommended that you indent anything inside of private and then if I were to come down here and I wanted this cats function or in this case cats method to be public I would just do public and then a semi or a normal colon and then I would indent that as well you don't have to do this but it definitely helps readability now inside of a class, there is one specific type of method that you probably should have. It's known as a constructor. And basically what that does is it, it's just a normal function or a method, but it 
takes in all of the parameters that you will need in order to operate the class and then it assigns it to the variable so in this case the instance variables uh, so in this case age and name are the two variables that I need to fill out now of course I can give these default uh, values but I'd, I'd want to have them change every time I initialize a class that's kind of the idea of having objects is to have different uh, data types and different attributes inside of them not data types but attributes inside of them so the way that I would do this is I would just type in the name of the class. I don't need to put in any kind of data type or anything like that, just the name of the class. And then inside of the parentheses, I would put in any kind of parameters I would want. So let's do new age, and we'll do new name as well. And then this is basically just another uh, function. So age equals new age, and then name equals new name. Now we can reference age and name because we were we are inside of the class body here. So we can access any of the private variables inside of even public methods and in this case a constructor um, because we were we are inside of the class body. Now let's go ahead and use that constructor to actually create an object out of our uh, class right here, our class of cat. So down here in our main function, what we're going to do is we're just going to type in the name of the uh, template or the object, or, the, or sorry, not the object, but the class. So in this case, cat as our data type. And then we're going to just type in the name of uh, whatever object we want to have. So uh, we'll just name it foo. And then inside of these parentheses, this is basically what's going to go into our constructor up here. So we're going to have our age be, let's say, 3, and we're going to have our name be, we're just going to name the cat Bark. Cat name to Bark. Now we can compile and run this. And you can see that we have a little bit of an issue here. Oh, of course. One thing I forgot, because I'm stupid, is I forgot to put in data types for our uh, parameters up here. That was my bad. So make sure that you're putting those in, and then it compiles. Now, if I run this, you can see nothing happens, because we're just making an object, and then we're exiting out. Now, if we tried to reference, let's say, age, for example, if we tried to do foo dot, and that is how you access anything inside of a class, if we did foo.age, let's say we'll try to see out foo.age, oops, and L. If we try to compile that, you can see that we're going to get an error here saying int cat age is private, and then error within this context. So basically, we're getting errors because we cannot access these private variables from outside of the class itself. Now, if we were to try to access this public function right here and try to call it, so we would do foo.cats, and then of course that's a function call, so opening and closing parentheses. If we compiled that, you can see we get no issues compiling it, and if we run it, then we get the value that we returned right here, which is 3. Now there are very common uh, sets of functions inside of objects that you generally are going to see called getters and setters, and basically that lets us manipulate and uh, access these private variables inside of a class without actually making them public. Um, and, and this can give you a little bit of control, so if there's, if you want to make sure that in the future um, nobody is setting the name to like dog again, uh, you can set that inside of these getter and setter functions. So you can control uh, the level of uh, basically access, uh, and you won't have to tell people to rewrite their code um, because everything will just be in public functions anyway. So the way that you would set up a, a getter, for example, we'll start with getters, is you would have the variable uh, data type of the variable that you're getting. So in this case, we're going to have a getter for age. And then you can really kind of name it whatever, but generally you're going to do get age, and that's generally the convention. And then you can open and close those curly brackets, and then you would just return, in this case, age. And if I wanted to do it for name, I would do string get name, and then I would just return name. Now to do a setter, we would just need a void function, and we would just do set, and then in this case age, 
and then I'll have parameter of type integer, I uh, will do new age. And then we just set age to new age, like we did in our constructor up here. And then likewise, we can do the same thing for the name. So void set name, string, new name, and name equals new name. Now, if we come down here, and let's say I want to get the age of our cat, I can do that, which in this case is 3, but if I were to change this to 6, oops, blah, there we go. If I were to change this to 6, then I can get the variable, uh, or the value of 6. And likewise, if I did get name, and I compiled and ran that, then we'll get the name bark. Now, of course, I can make as many variables of type cat that I want to. So let's say foo and bar are two cats, uh, and he's eight years old, and his name is, uh, I don't know, Edward. Why not? And if I were to compile and run this with just referencing foo in this case, or bark, I guess, um, then I can only get the value from uh, our class of, or our object of foo. But if I did bar instead, bar dot get name and L, then I get bark and Edward. And of course, if I set these variables um, to something else, so foo dot set name, and I did um, Tom, Tom the cat, and then I did C out foo dot get name again. then you can see that the name changes from Bark to Tom, and then we see Edward again, which is a different uh, object altogether. So that's the idea of getters and setters, uh, and pretty much the idea of classes altogether. Okay, so we have our class cat here, but let's say we wanted to have a class for dogs, for example. We would have to completely rewrite age, name, and all of this stuff all over again. But there's quite a bit of an easier way to do that, and that is what is known as inheritance. So inheritance basically says that you can make a class, and then you can make a subclass that takes all of the stuff from that first class and puts it into the second one. So uh, to do that, what we would need is first just one class. Now actually, we're going to change our cat class to animal. We're going to name it animal. And in this case, we're going to change this to animal as well. And uh, yeah, there's nothing in our main function this time around. So this is all of the generic attributes that we would need, generic attributes and methods that we would need in order to create a dog or a cat, for example. So let's do just that. So let's do class and cat this time, and then we'll open and close that. Now in order to inherit from class animal up here, what we would do is we'd put in a colon, and then we would do public, and then the name of the class that we were inheriting from. So in this case, animal. Now, uh, yeah, actually, let's just keep going. Private, we're going to do uh, an integer for, we'll, we'll say the, uh, the meow pitch. Let's say that, why not? And then we'll have our public, and then down here, we're going to have our constructor. So we'll do cat int meow pitch. And then inside of this constructor, we're also going to pull in our age and our name. Even though it's in this animal constructor here, uh, we're going to pull them into our constructor list or our uh, uh, list down here of parameters uh, anyway. So we'll do you know new uh, age and then string new name. Now, if we want to put new age and new name, we want to put those into our constructor for animal up here. And so the way that we would do that is on the same line as our constructor here, we'll put a colon, and then we'll do the name of our uh, class before, so in this case, animal, and then we'll just give it the names of new age and new name. Then we'll open this up, and all we have to do now is we actually need to rename this to new meow pitch, my bad is we'll just set meow pitch equals new meow meow pitch. There we go. And then if I wanted to, I could have uh, getters and setters in here as well. So get, uh, we'll just do get pitch in this case, 
we'll return meow pitch and then uh, void set pitch int new pitch and we'll do meow pitch equals new pitch there we go now inside of our main function we can declare a cat uh, as we would just before so we would do cat and in this case we're gonna name it foo again and now we're gonna have our meow pitch first so we're gonna say you know 2500 uh, kilohertz I don't know uh, or Hertz I guess is what that would be and then we'll have our age and we'll have our name so bark again so eight and bark are first going into the constructor for cat because it's in the parameter list here but then the constructor for cat is just going to feed that right into the constructor for animal up here which sets all of the variables uh, instance variables for the animal class in here and just puts them all in there and then we can access all of these public uh, methods and if we had any uh, variables or attributes we could access those too but in this case we just have methods so if we wanted to we could come down here and we could get barks age so get age and we'll actually have to do c out and l and then if we compile that and run it you can see that we get the age of bark and we can do get name as well we get bark and then we can get pitch directly from cat so get pitch and there we go 2500 now if I wanted to make a dog it would be very similar I would just take all of this and just name it dog and I guess dogs don't really meow so we would just change meow pitch to let's say bark loudness basically but that's pretty much it that is the entirety of uh, well the basics at least of classes uh, they're kind of not a terribly easy concept uh, in programming but they are a very powerful uh, concept whenever you are able to harness them so that's basically it in the next episode we are going to be talking about uh, we're gonna be talking about libraries and modules so libraries in C++ and pretty much everything else and then modules in Python so that's all I have for today thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next episode peace